we are conscious of mental activity. Hmm. The other one is we are conscious of physical, uh, physical object and mental object. Lah. So the uh, mental object is nama. Lah. Uh, here it says uh, feeling, perception, volition, contact, and attention. Uh, so we are conscious. This is the mental part. Uh, we are conscious of. Uh, and then the physical part uh, we are conscious of uh, is the four great elements uh, and the form derived from the four great elements. These four great elements uh, designate uh, the physical world. Uh. But the physical world, uh, since the physical world only exists in consciousness, uh, in a sense uh, it's not real. You know. It's just a, a perception of consciousness. We perceive it. Uh, and because the physical world is a perception of consciousness, uh, that's why uh, it has four characteristics. One is the earth element. Here when you talk about the, the four great elements, uh, one is the earth element, means solidity. La. For example, I touch this table, it feels solid. Uh, it feels solid, but actually it's only a perception. Uh, if my mind is strong enough, uh, like uh, Arahan with psychic powers, uh, I can perceive this as soft. Man. Uh, it doesn't have to be hard, right? Uh, so, this physical world uh, is just a perception, right? And the other one is earth, uh, water. Water is, uh, uh, the characteristic of water uh, is that uh, it coheres together, right? it coheres together and forms a shape. Right? So, because we have water in our body, uh, you, we, we see ourselves in a certain shape. Right? If we dehydrate our body, uh, take out all the water, the vapor from our body totally, uh, the whole body becomes like a powder, it will collapse like a powder. Uh, so that is the characteristic of water. Uh, it coheres the things together to give it a form, uh, a shape. Mm. Uh, earth, water, fire. Fire is the heat element. Heat element, suppose we, pers we, we touch something, we feel it hot or cold. Uh, uh, so that is a perception uh, and then the last one is uh, wind, earth, water, fire, wind. Wind uh, is the movement, characteristic of movement. Uh, so like in our body, uh, we have the wind element. So things move in our body, lah. the blood moves, uh, the air in our body moves, uh, the food in our, in our stomach moves all because of the wind element. Okay. Uh, so you see, uh, these uh, physical qualities, uh, earth, water, fire, wind, uh, they are only a perception, you know. So because of that, uh, the mind is very important. If your mind is pure, uh, your mind, you have a good heart, uh, the world, uh, all this perception, uh, all this perception in the world uh, is comfortable to you. Uh. For example, you don't feel too hot, you don't feel too cold. Uh, but if your karma is so bad, nah, your, 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 you have an evil mind, nah, you, you may perceive yourself in hell, nah, where it's terribly cold or it's terribly hot nah, with the flames of hell nah, burning you. Uh, all that is created by the mind. You see? So the world actually is created by our mind. That's why our mind is so important. <clears throat> so, uh, that's talking about uh, Nama Rupa. So Nama Rupa is mentality and materiality, yeah. uh, what consciousness perceives. Uh, and after consciousness uh, is volition. And what monks is volition? There are these three kinds of volition. Body volition, verbal volition, and mental volition. Uh, here the word is Sankara. Uh, so in Pali, yeah, it's Kaya Sankara, Vachi Sankara, and Chitta Sankara. Okay. Hmm. So, um, these three, yeah, Kaya, Vachi, and Chitta Sankara, if you study the suttas, uh, uh, you will meet, uh, this is one set, uh, one set of three Sankaras, Kaya, Vachi, and Chitta Sankara. You study the suttas, you will meet a second set na, called almost the same Kaya Sankara, Vachi Sankara, and Mano Sankara. The last one is different, Mano Sankara. Uh, so uh, these two sets uh, uh, are used in different um, 
different circumstances lah. In uh, Paticca Sambutpada, dependent origination, uh, you will find uh, that the Sankara is always these three lah, Kaya, Vachi and Citta Sankara. But in some other suttas, uh, when they talk about Kama, uh, Kama, creating Kama, then it is Kaya, Vachi and Mano Sankara. Uh. So the problem uh, is with, with the later monks, uh, they seem to have confused the two. Lah. And uh, in the traditional interpretation uh, of this word Sankara here, it says volitional formations uh, or volition. Uh, they always associate volition uh, with karma, with creating karma. Uh, they, they say uh, because of ignorance in the past, uh, we created karma. So because of creating karma, uh, now we are reborn uh, with consciousness. Uh. Uh, but I feel that's a mistake. Uh. Yeah. Uh, if you read my book, uh, Dependent Origination, uh, I say this word volition uh, has to do with the will to live. Uh. And because of ignorance, uh, we all beings uh, have a very strong will to live. Uh. The will to live, not to die. Uh. Uh, so because of the will to live, uh, the moment we die, our consciousness starts again. Uh. Uh, so uh, that is uh, Sankara. Mm. And what monks is ignorance, not knowing suffering, not knowing the origin of suffering, not knowing the cessation of suffering, not knowing the way leading to the cessation of suffering. This is called ignorance. Thus monks, with ignorance as condition, volition comes to be. Uh, with volition as condition, consciousness. With consciousness as condition, nama rupa, mentality, materiality. With nama rupa as condition, the six sense basis come into existence. Uh, with six sense basis as condition, you have contact. With contact as condition, you have feeling. With feeling as condition, you have craving, then clinging, being, birth, aging, and death. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is the origin of the whole mass of suffering. Uh, and similarly, when ignorance ceases, uh, then volition ceases, and then consciousness ceases, and then mentality, materiality ceases one by one. Uh, now, I just uh, go to this again. Uh, out of these 12 links, uh, you find uh, most of them uh, we can understand. Two uh, are stumbling blocks. Uh, one is Sankara, the other one is Bhava. Sankara. Uh, uh, I translate as uh, volition. Uh, here it says volitional formations. La. The other one is bhava. Bhava here it says existence. La. But I think it is being. La. Uh, uh, so keep in mind uh, these two. Uh, 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 these two uh, uh, sources of uh, conflict in, in, in interpretation. Uh. So now I go to this again. Uh, how this uh, suffering comes about. So the first uh, condition. Uh, is ignorance, la, not knowing the Four Noble Truths. When we don't understand the Four Noble Truths, uh, uh, we think the world is a nice place uh, to live. La. So because of ignorance, uh, we have volition. Volition is the will to live, la, interpretation, la, the will to live. Uh, uh, it's only the Arahans, uh, the, the, the Buddhas, uh, they have understood uh, the Four Noble Truths, uh, and then they have no more will to live. La. They let go of the will to live, la. right? Uh, whereas all other beings, uh, you have a very strong will to live, volition, sankara. And this uh, will to live uh, conditions consciousness. La. Because of sankara, the will to live, uh, you have consciousness. Consciousness continues. La. Uh. And then when consciousness arises, uh, it must always come together with phenomena, mentality, materiality, the object of consciousness, okay? Yeah. So this is a pair. Lah. And once you have this consciousness, ah, then and mentality, materiality, yeah, then you must have a body. And this body has a sixth sense basis. Lah. Okay? Mm. And then the sixth sense basis, once you have a body ah, with six senses, ah, then there must be contact. Lah. Contact at the sixth sense basis. And then once there is contact, uh, either from seeing or hearing, etc., feeling arises. Okay? Uh, so this feeling, uh, if it is pleasant feeling, uh, it gives rise to craving. Uh, once you enjoy something, uh, uh, 
uh, you, you crave for it. Uh. And once you crave for it, uh, and what are these things you crave for? Crave for forms, crave for sounds, crave for odor, odors, crave for taste, crave for touch, crave for uh, mental phenomena. Mm. So once you have craving, uh, then you cling to it. Uh. Okay? You cling to it. And when you cling to it, uh, uh, when you enjoy something uh, and you cling to it, uh, you always have the feeling, I enjoy. I enjoy. That's why uh, uh, sensual pleasures uh, in the world uh, is, is a great obstacle uh, to liberation. Once we, have, uh, we enjoy life, uh, we have a good life, uh, we enjoy it, uh, then we don't want to let go. Because you, you, you have, the, the, have the perception that uh, I am enjoying life. Why should I let go of life? Uh? It's only when you have suffering uh, that you want to uh, find a way out of samsara. Uh. So uh, once you have that clinging, uh, then you have that I exist, la, that I am, la, uh, that is the being, la, uh, bhava. Mm. So once you have the being, uh, uh, you have the feeling I have come into the world, la, that is birth. La come to the world birth. Uh, once you have birth, uh, then you have aging, sickening, dying, and all different types of suffering. Uh, uh, so this is how suffering comes about. Uh, uh, so uh, this part, uh, I have to take time to explain uh, because this is the foundation. If you understand these 12 links, uh, very well, uh, then you will understand the subsequent suttas. Uh, otherwise, no point. Uh, you go too fast, uh, you don't understand. Uh. Is there anything about these 12 links you want to ask? Okay, we go to the next sutta, 12.10. Monks, before my enlightenment, while I was still a bodhisattva, not yet fully enlightened, it occurred to me, Alas, this world has fallen into trouble in that it is born, ages and dies. It passes away and is reborn, yet it does not understand the escape from this suffering headed by aging and death. When now will an escape be discerned from this suffering headed by aging and death? Then monks, it occurred to me, when what exists does aging and dying come to be? By what is aging and dying condition. Then monks, through careful attention, there took place in me a breakthrough by wisdom. When there is birth, aging and death or dying comes to be. Aging and death has birth as, as its condition. Uh, I stop here for a moment. Uh. So here, uh, the Buddha was trying to, the Bodhisattva, uh, he was trying to analyze why is there suffering in this world? Then he realized, it's because we are born into this world, uh, therefore we must suffer. Uh. If we are not born into this world, then there's no suffering. Uh. So the, the cause uh, of aging and dying, uh, that means suffering, uh, is birth. Uh. Mm. Then monks, it occurred to me, when what exists, does birth come to be? By what is birth conditioned? <coughs> then monks, to careful attention, there took place in me a breakthrough by wisdom. When there is being, birth comes to be. Birth has existence as being as its condition. Uh, and then uh, stop here for a moment. Uh. So here the Buddha is thinking, uh, why is there birth? Uh, then he realized uh, there is birth uh, because there is this perception, I exist, ma. I am. Uh, when, you, when you have that feeling, uh, I exist in this world, uh, uh, then you perceive that you are born into this world, right? Uh, then monks, it occurred to me, when what exists, uh, or when what, uh, uh, this word bhava can be exist, uh, does, exist, does being come to be? When what exists, does being come to be? By what is being condition or existence condition? Then monks, by careful attention, there took place in me a breakthrough by wisdom. When there is clinging, being comes to be. Clinging, um, being has clinging as its condition. Uh, uh, stop here a moment. Uh. As I explained just now, uh, uh, once you enjoy 
life.